Mrs. Lachance is admitted to the medical care unit. It is 10.30. She has fallen repeatedly in the previous weeks. She has been previously diagnosed with HBP type 2 diabetes and has suffered from stage 4 Alzheimer's for the past two years. She has also suffered from rheumatoid arthritis for five years. Upon admission, a thorough collection of data would be conducted, focusing on the client's medical history and personal habits. For the sake of this tutorial, the nurse will focus solely on the fall episodes. The nurse assesses Mrs. Lachan's fall. Mrs. Lachan is accompanied by her granddaughter, who lives with her. At the beginning of each shift, it is important for the nurse to introduce herself to the users. She states her name and position and reassures the client by indicating what will happen next. Hi, Mrs. Lachance. My name is Mary. I will be your nurse today. Hi. 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 So I'm here to assess the circumstances of your fall. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, okay. Hi, I'm Megan. I'm her granddaughter and her primary caregiver. Okay. Uh, is it okay if I stay since she has dementia? So mm -hmm. she might not be able to answer every question properly. So I just want to make sure that everything's okay. Okay. Is it okay if your granddaughter stays with us? Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. It is important for the nurse to ask for the user's consent to allow her granddaughter to stay during the assessment. The same applies to all family members, friends, or significant others. The nurse must ensure that the user is comfortable with the presence of the person during assessments and or interventions. If the user refuses to allow the granddaughter to attend, the nurse will ask the granddaughter to leave for the duration of the assessment. Okay, very well. Um, Ms. Lachance, can you explain to me how your fall happened? Yeah, I was asleep, okay. and then I woke up. And then, then I was, all of a sudden, I was on the floor. Okay. I, I don't know how it happened. It happened so fast. Okay. The nurse asks the user to explain how the fall occurred. It is important to get the user's side of the story to get a complete picture of the issue. I woke up when I heard a noise in the hallway. So. Okay. Usually she asks me for help to move mm -hmm. around or else she uses her walker, but okay. this time she seems like she forgot it. Okay. I didn't want to wake you. You were asleep. I didn't want to bother you. The granddaughter's input is important in that case because it clarifies the context and offers explanations that would not be obtained with the user's version alone. Okay, so where exactly did you fall, Mrs. Lachance? Um, in the hallway near the bathroom. Okay, and, and before you fell, did you experience any other discomfort? Maybe some dizziness or blurry vision? No. No? No. Okay. Um, did you lose your balance? No. Your, I don't think so. No. Your feet, do, do they hurt? No. Yeah. No. And no. did you hit your head? I don't think so. No. No, I don't think so. When I found her, she was just sitting in the middle of the hallway. Okay. Um, you also mentioned needing to go to the bathroom. Was it urgent? Oh, yes. Okay. And are you in any pain? Did you hurt yourself? Uh, no. You know what? She's the one who insisted to okay. come here. I feel fine. Okay, um, so Megan, could you tell me what led you to seek medical advice for this fall? Sure. Uh, recently, she's been more distant, less okay. talkative than usual. Uh, she's had more issues also following the instructions that I give her. Okay. Uh, she's also been forgetting her walker recently every time she moves around. Okay, so, so you noticed a change in her general condition, so it's an abrupt change in her functional autonomy so in the past week? Or? Actually, yes, it has been. A, a week ago, everything was fine, but recently, okay, like I said, she's had issues following instructions or moving around. Thank you. The nurse assesses the presence of major geriatric clinical symptoms. In the elderly, these symptoms are warning signs of a pathological process. The first of these symptoms is a change in the mental status affecting memory, 
concentration, and organization of thought. The second symptom is a change in functional autonomy, either in terms of daily activities such as food, mobility, or personal hygiene, or in terms of domestic activities such as managing finances, taking medication, or preparing meals. The last symptom is a change in behavior such as the appearance of motor or verbal agitation, withdrawal or isolation, irritability or changes in sleep patterns. Okay, so um, judging from what you're telling me, I think that Ms. Slashels could be suffering from an infectious process. What's that? A urinary tract infection, potentially. And now that you mention it, she has been going to the bathroom a lot more frequently, okay. and her urine has kind of a foul odor. Okay, so I will notify the doctor so we can order a urine test. So for the elderly, it's actually common to have changes in their behavior as a symptom of an infection process. Early UTIs can cause those symptoms? Yes, it is possible. It happens, yes. Oh, I didn't know. Okay, um, let's continue, if you don't mind. So, um, I saw that Ms. Lachance has high blood pressure as well as type 2 diabetes, I think. Diabetes, sorry. Yes? Yes, yes it she does, and the pharmacy always gets her dosages every week, and I always give her medication every day. Okay, good. And so it's all under control, the diabetes and the blood pressure? Yes, the diabetes we control through her medicine and as well as her diet. Mm -hmm. uh, for the blood pressure, she's had it for years and been taking the same medication, so it's been stable. Okay, so I saw that she also has a prescription for the Laudit. Yes, I only give it to her maybe once or twice a week if she needs it most of the time. Okay. The nurse verifies if the medication is properly administered, which is very important. She also makes sure that the treatments are effective and that the user's health condition is stable. If the treatments are not appropriate for the user's condition, this could, for example, increase the risk of falling by creating hypotension or hypoglycemia. The nurse also assesses medication intake at home. When the pharmacological profile mentions narcotic analgesics, for instance, the nurse evaluates how often these medications are taken. It should be noted that this type of medication can increase the risk of falling. Okay, and uh, she takes an Ativan before going to bed, is that correct? Yes, every night around 9 p.m., that's when I give it to her. Taking anxiolytics can also increase the risk of falling. The nurse therefore asks how often this medication is taken. Okay, so thank you for your answers. Um, this helps me get a more thorough picture of, of your home situation. Yeah. Okay. So since you mentioned that it's getting a bit more difficult for your grandmother to follow instructions and since she has just fallen, um, we will implement some measures, but if these measures are not sufficient, we might have to go with restraining measures, such as uh, a waist belt in the bed, so that she doesn't fall again or doesn't try to get up by herself. Uh, I would need your written consent for that. Of course. I mean, I would rather you use alternative measures, mm -hmm. but if it does come to that, I will allow you to use them. I mean, okay. I'd, I'd hate for her to break a hip if she falls again. That would just be awful. Of course. No, we will absolutely implement all the alternative measures, but this, the last resort would be their strengths. But you would be okay with, with giving, your, giving your written authorization? Yes, yes, I'll, I'll sign it, no problem. Okay, thank you. I will, I will go get the form. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. She's nice. Yeah, she is. There are several alternatives to using restraining measures, such as ensuring that the user is familiar with her physical environment, clearly indicating the location of the bathroom, using a nightlight, using motion sensors, establishing a schedule to meet the user's basic needs, in other words, using the bathroom, eating, drinking, etc. Each particular care situation may require alternative measures, and it is the nurse's responsibility to implement them before resorting to restraining measures. In the event that the alternative measures fail, 
the use of restraints become unavoidable to protect the user from dangers, in this case, the risk of falling.